Hey guys, Richie here from Troll Line Fishing. First off, I'm gonna start off. We are like 12 days out of Lake St. Clair, LSC. Me and Steve are so excited to get there. Um, I've been kind of waiting. I feel like it's, it's heating up at the right time. That lake is always on fire and always hot, but I'm excited to get out there. Hopefully the weather cooperates because I know we're looking at a little bit of rain right now. Um, but I thought I would just do a quick video on kind of just talking musky and different musky techniques and tactics that kind of a lot of people are up in the air about or you know that they don't know this is more for beginners if anything so for example a lot of like the basic things such as trolling speeds lure decisions you know the types of things you're throwing and the types of conditions you're throwing things like that i just thought i'd go over it so that somebody who's just starting out with musky has kind of something to go off so i'm gonna start with trolling speed if you're trolling um depending on the time of year depending on your clarity of water it determines how fast you're going to be rolling and even how bad the weeds are, top water weeds, uh, just weeds in general. So the rule of thumb that I've heard is people go between three and five miles an hour. So you think, okay, where that, when am I going five and when am I going three? So I find summer 76s, 77s, the kind of upper 70s to mid 70s, you're rolling five, you can do five miles an hour. You know, and when I mean five, it could be four eight, it could be four seven, it could be that type of deal. I wouldn't exceed five miles an hour. Five miles an hour is kind of my cap. So, you know, you're going at four six. I usually pull blades in this instance because it's the only thing that kind of rips really well. You can pull crankbaits as well, it definitely can be. I find when most of the time when you're trolling that fast, you're getting a blade because you're just trying to get a quick strike and something to trigger them. It's a trigger strike, I guess, or, you know, cause it's ripping by them. You want them to instinct, like the, you want their instincts to take over so that they hit the bait. Um, and then times when I'd be going like three and sometimes even two eight is when you're in the below sixties water temps. So I know when we went to LSC a few years ago, we had guides uh, going on the, the river system with us and they were going to eight, um, which you think, wow, it's kind of slow. Depending on water conditions, you can go three miles an hour, but if you're in kind of a chop, you almost got to go three and a half to kind of keep your boat from, you know, from, mo from moving, to continue moving, sorry, because sometimes the waves are coming so far. So even though you're reading at four miles an hour moving, your lures aren't moving at four miles an hour because of the way you're hitting wakes and you're not kind of planing out, if that makes any sense. So you're gonna go three miles an hour usually later in the fall or later in the season. There's been some people who go 2.5 miles an hour. Let the fish tell you. A lot of the time, if you're out there fishing for musky, you're not out there for two minutes. You're out there for six, seven, eight. I'm sometimes we're out there for 12 hours, me and Steve. You're, you're gonna try different speeds. Start at three, five, do four or five passes at that speed, go down, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 four or five passes at that, go down to three, same thing, and constantly change it up. You're out there for the long haul. You're not out there for an hour. If you're out there for an hour, then it's a little bit more difficult because you can't really you know, pinpoint a speed. Then you know what? You might get lucky enough that at a certain speed, you start hitting fish. And then you know, okay, let's try a couple more passes at this speed. And you know, and then you also can get told a lot too. If you have a lot of short hits where they're hitting and it's releasing, you know you gotta slow down a bit. But if you're, they're hitting, swimming and then releasing, it could be you're not going fast enough. So it's helping you find that happy medium that kind of helps you sink, like get in on those fish. Because musky fishing, sometimes it's one chance is all you get when you're out there. And if you're out there for a 10 hour day, some guys are out there for two days, they go back, you know, one day and the next day got nothing and then boom, they get one fish. It's one, up, even if it's a 30 inch here. If you've been fishing for 48 hours, like two days, you want anything in the boat at that point. And that's how musky are. Like, I know the first time I went to Lake St. Clair, I was dying to get a muskie. I hooked something. I thought I got one. I got one. Came to the boat. It was a freshwater drum. I was devastated. I was so upset, but it was what it was. So that's the kind of thing with trolling speed. It, you have to let the fish tell you. I fish the course of the lake system and I find my fastest hit I've ever had was at 4.2 miles an hour. Water temps were at about 74 but most of the time I have luck at around three, seven, three, five, three, seven's kind of my magic, like three, six to three, eight. That's my range that I find. I pick up a lot on blades. Um, TNA Andrew dragon, that thing was on fire this year for me. Had a couple good hits, had a good 40 incher. Um, even, uh, handlebars are always a staple in the Corthas I find and other lakes you fish. Uh, surprisingly enough, we did a lot of the F five, uh, not the F5, sorry, the, we did the Weed Whackers, the BWB Weed Whackers. I got a nice chunky 42 and a quarter on it. Uh, and we were ripping it at about 3.6 or 3.7 that day. And it smoked it. I like those style of hooks because it's a single hook. 
our style of bait sorry because they're a single hook and they're just nice to have really easy to unhook most of the time you don't need to cut them because they're just in a spot you can go and boom you're gone and you nice picture gone they go um so i talked about the different trolling speeds in the different seasons you know spring i guess i should talk about spring muskie i find spring muskie it's a hit or a miss i've caught them at freaking three and nine in the spring like i'm talking first week in june i know it's considered summer but it's spring muskie four miles an hour and i've caught them at 3.2 miles an hour i it, it varies let the fish tell you um i'm going to talk about a little bit about colors now of the different uh lures that you can use depending on water clarity is a huge one and even the, the day itself so a lot of people say bright colors on a bright day dark colors on a dark day then i've also heard people saying that they do the opposite of that so it's it sucks to tell you this there's no right answer to this question some guides and some people will tell you no you got to use black on a dark day you got to use dark colors on a dark. you don't need to do anything and it doesn't matter your water clarity you know they say this they say this it's whatever the fish wants to hit that day if you have a gut feeling go with it there's no right answer to this people might think i'm wrong that's your opinion my opinion is is that i think it's wrong to say you can only use a certain color on a certain day i've had clear gin water sunny day trolling a brown dark brown bait brown not gold not dark brown and i've caught a muskie on it going to the logic i've only should have been trolling like bright colors, bright blues, bright uh, even silver, like so, things like that. It works all the time. Now, is it possibly that you're gonna get more numbers if you follow that initial rule? Maybe. That doesn't mean it's gonna only be what you can follow. Because think about this, how often do you troll a dark crankbait on a dark day? I find a lot of my crankbaits are actually quite bright colored and I catch fish all year with them. And sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's dark, and I find it's what you put in front and what the fish wants to do that day. That kind of goes, like I said, to trolling speed though, because you want an instinct or almost like a, like their instinct attack. They see food and they're like, they don't want to think about it, just boom, they hit it and that's it. So I think lure color, you got to have faith in what you're trolling. If you have a bait on, you have no faith in it, it might catch you a monster, it may not. The first time I ever went musky fishing, uh, was on Scugog. I was with Steve and uh, Kyle and we were trolling along. We were heading back. It was 3.30. Me and Steve had been out there since 6.30 in the morning. We had nothing all day. All of a sudden, I decided to throw on a 700 Fire ti Tucker, Fire Tiger, oh my God, Tucker, Fire Tiger, Joe Booker, 700, single blade, cast it out. The water was murky. You couldn't see down, I say a, a foot, two feet, you couldn't see. It was just, Scugog wasn't clear that day. Boom, caught a 49 inch muskie. Could it have been that I was trolling a black blade, it would have done the same thing? Absolutely. Could it have been I was trolling a gold blade, it would have done the same thing? Absolutely. I find the fish is gonna hit what the fish wants to hit. And that's why I, I find that there's a lot of things that the fishermen are more attracted to baits than the fish are. Um, it's something I laugh about frequently, being on so many musky pages and so many lure pages. Some people are gonna say, Richard, you're a hypocrite. You're running on so many bait raffles. You're absolutely right, I am. And I'll be the first one to admit it. I'm a guy who, if I see a bait that's 15 inches, I'm all in, I love that. I'm all for bigger baits. I got a couple bait, I got more than three or four baits over 12 inches. With lips, some of them are 18 inches. So I'm that kind of guy, that's my style of fishing. I think that's something I, I really wanna emphasize. Um, I know it's a little bit longer, but it's more of a talking kind of thing. Uh, to let you guys kind of just what I actually think about musky fishing. I think there's so much put into it and so much thought. Sometimes I think we just forget going out and fishing and having fun. Uh, musky fishing is definitely, it takes a toll on you. You're fishing all types of weird ass weather. You're fishing in cold, sometimes scorching hot, as long as the water temps don't hit over 80, which is another discussion for another day. So many people believe that at over 80 degrees that it's fatal to a fish. Um, they are doing more studies on that. So if I, once they complete the studies on this, I'd like to see how they complete it because they, they want to catch muskie in 80 degree weather, tag them and see if they float up, if their mortality rate is that much higher. Um, but anyways, that's a different conversation. So I think the biggest thing when you're starting to muskie fish, just make sure you have the proper tools. Baits, I find we go crazy over baits. You can get good size musky on anything at Gagnon's or Sale. You can go, that's an Oshawa Gagnon's and Sale in Oshawa as well. Both of them are at, one's a Simcoe and Stevenson. They're just near each other. 
you can get away with just buying baits from there. Now, am I saying not to support a Canadian bait maker or a US bait maker? Absolutely not. You should definitely support them if you can. And if you want to, absolutely. If you don't want to though, a believer, I some of my biggest fish and best fish have been on believers. Um, and that's why I have a 10 inch and two 13s, three 13s, two jointed and one non-jointed. So it is what it is. You guys can truly, you, you gotta just go with your gut and what you think is gonna work is probably gonna work. A lot of the time I've trolled baits before and I've sat there going, I don't have confidence in this. And I find I got into the point where I had so many musky baits I'd open my crankbait box and look down and go, what am I trolling? What am I gonna do? I trolled everything here four times each, gave them a good amount of time, good amount of shakes. You hit that point with musky fishing. If you're a musky fisherman, you get it. You've been out there for four days without a hit and you're kind of, you don't know what to do. And I find limiting your selection is a big thing. I, I love having multiples of everything and all these different colors and all this different stuff. I'll be the first one to admit it. For me, blades are the only thing that I have more than one of so I have double tens. I've got 20 colors of double tens. I don't buy, you know, seven or eight of the same crankbaits, all different colors. I don't do that type of thing. I try to spread out my types of colors on all my crankbaits, but I do not have one crankbait, seven colors of it. I don't agree with that. I don't think you need to go to that far. Um, another thing, uh, if you're a caster and you like to cast, you got to adjust your casting, like when you're reeling in, according to water temps. Colder it is, the slower you go, the more jerk style baits you're gonna do on a colder day. Warmer water, you, you want blades, you wanna rip them in fast, you wanna get them in fast, fast into your eights, everything. Spring days, you're gonna reel at a me medium pace, but you're still gonna have, some guys will tell you crank it in the spring too, but you will have a smaller bait. You shouldn't be tossed, you can toss double tens. That's another thing, they tell you you're not supposed to. I've caught uh, a big musky, 40 plus inches, it's not big, but. It, 40 plus inch musky trolling double tens in opener. It happens, you can do it. It's not like they're not gonna hit it. Are they less likely to? Maybe. But how can we truly say yes or no? There's so many people that say, you know, I do this and this is why I'm right. It's, there's no scientific behind it. It's, you can't do scientific research behind, are they gonna hit a double 10 more than a double seven? You can just go off experience. That's all you can go off. Some guys say that's good enough. I'm a guy who wants the proof behind that. I want to know that they're hitting a double seven or a seven over a double 10 because it's smaller and they can't do that. So how are they going to tell you, no, you got to do this. You don't need to do anything. Just musky fish and have a good time. So this is a little bit of a longer video, but I just want to cover small things that I had when I first came into musky fishing and kind of what I've gathered over, it's only been three years for me. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'm a professional musky fisherman. I'll, that's the last thing I'll say to you. Do I catch a decent amount of musky and pretty good size ones? I have, I've caught a few good ones, a couple 49s and a 53 and you know, 44s and all that kind of jazz. In the Kawartha is mine I had. The 53 was in Lake St. Clair, but I've caught 49, two 49s, couple 44s in the Kawarthas, which are pretty decent fish considering that chain of lake. Um, but this is just kind of off my experience, guys. I just wanted to let you know some of the points. The biggest thing I still say today is get your tackles, proper leaders. So if you're trolling, I would suggest a th three foot plus leader. Three feet's enough. Some guys will tell you need six foot. No, three foot is more than enough. Um, casting leaders, I use 18 inch. I buy the one, I used to buy the ones at sale. They were $15 for 250 fluorocar 150 pound fluorocarbon leader. I fished those things. They didn't fray. I caught fish trolling with them. I used to troll with them, everything. Now, I know there's some bodies of waters like the St. Lawrence River that have freak fish that are just absolute slobs. Do I recommend you get the best equipment for that area? Absolutely. You gotta give yourself the best. At this point here, a lot of the time, I troll 100 pound test, 150 pound fluorocarbon um, with a shock absorber on them. I can't think of the name of it, musky, uh, the musky fluorocarbon one there, but it's, it's good. It's a three foot trolling reel or leader, sorry, and it helps with the impact on a big muskie. For me, when I'm trolling the Quarthas, I can get away with an 18 inch one with the shock absorber and it'll do just fine. You wanna give yourself the gear. It's more to protect your lures more than anything at this point here is what I've said. I've had, you know, $50 casts where you cast a Medusa and you just watch that son of a bitch fly a hundred yards and it's not attached to your line. It just snaps. It's an expensive sport, it absolutely is. But the first thing I tell you, other than terminal tackle with hooks and split rings, you need the bolt cutters, 
you need the long needle nose pliers, make sure you get those to get your hands out of the fish's mouth because they are dangerous fish. They will bite you. Um, the net. Drifter makes a beautiful series net for $149.99 at sale that I've seen it. You can get on sale for less, which means Steve did. It's hard to find them, but when they have them, they have them. It's the Predator series. It's a big net. You can keep the fish in the water and it's, it makes everything easier. It makes your fatality rate way less. It makes hurting the fish a lot less. And you can, you know, if you catch that personal best muskie, you toss her in the net, let her revive a bit, take a picture, get the proper measurements of its girth, put it in the water and she'll swim away with ease. And that's what you always wanna see, especially as a muskie fisherman, you wanna see that fish swim off for another day so that you can come back and catch it next time or somebody else has that opportunity. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I hope I answered some of the weird questions that some people have you know, been asked or have talked about. I think like I've covered, I cover trolling speeds depending on year, lure, uh, colors depending on water clarity or um, like brightness of the day. Like they usually say stained water, dark colors, bright water, clear water, bright colors, sunny day, bright colors, dark. It doesn't matter guys. Just do what you think is gonna work that day. I find no matter what type of day it is, in my area that I was fishing, brown and darker golds, phenomenal. Didn't matter what type of day it was, that's what it was catching. I could throw on orange, nothing. Could throw on black, nothing. Could throw on uh, silver and blue, nothing. As soon as I put on a gold or a brown, I start getting hits. Sometimes let the fish tell you what they want. If you can't get a fish to tell you what you want, all I can tell you is, is like I said, change your speeds constantly. You know, you're out there for the long haul. So, you know, do a couple passes at each speed. I'm not saying you're gonna catch a muskie in the first pass. You know, you might take you four or five passes before you actually get something, but fairly quick enough that you should know. Um, actually, I'll cover one quick thing as well. So trolling is the best way to cover the most amount of water in a short period of time. You're gonna troll more than you are if you cast no matter how you look at it. I'm a moving person. If you don't have a proper trolling motor, I do not. I'm unfortunate, I do not have um, a Minn Kota. I really wanna get a Minn Kota. I have a motor guide, but an old one where the foot pedal is very awkward, like the foot pedal's up here or up here. Like it's not, it's not like the mount, the floor mount one. So it's very difficult to use, especially in choppy water. Cause you'll be going straight, you'll hit a wave, you'll push down and then it spins the motor around. If you have a Minn Kota where you can kind of follow lines and you know move at about, 0.9 miles an hour, casting in different locations, that's that's your best bet. If you can't do that, drift casting still works. Absolutely it does. Do not let anyone tell you drifting doesn't work. Sometimes on windy days, get a get a parachute or even get a five gallon bucket, drill you know, seven, eight holes around the side, toss it over the side like an anchor. It'll drag your ass if the wind's strong. That's the poor man's parachute, but it can help. Just a small little tip if you don't want to buy a $80 parachute or whatever. I think they're more than that. But anyways, that's your cast away. Have fun. Cast rubbers. Cast You control rubbers. I said that in my previous video. Um, I've got the tandem thing with the blade on it so that I can hook it up. And if there's a blade and a thump, it looks unreal. I'm excited to pull that. You know, troll different things. Cast different things. Most of all, like I said, have fun and keep on musky fishing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and your continuous support as of recently. This is Richard from Troll Line Fishing. See ya.